Hello, my name is Kate and welcome to Habits of a Modern Hippie. <laughs> Hello, Miko. Miko has decided to be super clingy today, so <laughs> here we go. Oh, yes, Tinkerbell is over sleeping by the door. Today's video is all about how to identify and use five herbs that are great for when you're hiking. I live here in Colorado and love to hike with the fluffs all the time. And growing up with my mom, who is an herbalist and a naturalist, I got to learn all about really cool medicinal plants. So oftentimes your first aid kit could be growing next to the trail, especially here in Colorado because the Rocky Mountains are a great place for a lot of medicinal herbs to be grown. However, they are grown all over the world. So I'll pop a couple of resources in the links below, including my blog post, which I've already written and is crazy long. So it's like 1200 words. So if you have any questions that aren't answered in the video, that will be in the first line of the description below. Miko! So it'll also have still photos of the herbs and how to identify them, etc. It's really hard to talk with a puppy. What are you doing? <laughs> I absolutely recommend bringing your own first aid kit with you if you're hiking, backpacking, etc. But if something's missing or you need something right away on the trail and you don't have one of those in your bag, these five herbs can help. So I will start out with probably the most useful herb and that is yarrow. Yarrow, or Achillea milliform, which I'm probably saying completely wrong is the real name for it. The name of it, Achilla, comes from Achilles, which is fun, but there are many fables that say he used that herb to actually stop bleeding in some of his soldiers and save their lives, which is kind of a cool way where that name came into play. But like I said, it is a styptic, which means it helps stop bleeding like you're thinking about those styptic pencils that you use for grooming your pups. Essentially, a styptic is something that t contains alkaloids that help blood clot quicker. You can use yarrow as a poultice, which is kind of you just ground up or mash up the <laughs> full herb with a little bit of water and press that onto whatever's bleeding. Or in some cases, if it's easier and you just have a little scrape, you can actually use a yarrow leaf and just spread it on top of your wound and get all of that goodness in there. Yarrow is also a sedative, it is anti-inflammatory, and it is a painkiller as well. So when you put that on a wound, it's gonna help bring down that inflammation and take some of that pain away if you have a pretty not so fun scrape. If you watched my latest vlog with the pups, I'll link it up above, up in Steamboat, which is actually where I got these pictures and the little videos that I'm popping up here somewhere of the herbs. You'll notice my mom actually tripped over a log and had a big scrape down her leg and used some yarrow to help stop that bleeding. Now the biggest part is identifying and I am going to say this and I will say this for each one but absolutely make sure that you're 100% positive what the plant is before you use it. Yarrow can look super similar to Queensland lace from wild carrot tops, things like that, but you wanna make sure the thing that you're putting on your open wound or your body is actually what you think it is. So at the end of the video, I'll show some books that help out. So if you do find a plant on the trail and you're not quite sure if it's what you're thinking it is, don't use it. Yarrow can grow to almost three feet tall. It has beautiful white flowers that look a little bit like Queens and lace, if you know what that is. Yarrow leaves, as the plant grows, alternate on either side of the stalk, and they look like little ferns. So a single stalk with lots of little tiny leaves coming off of them as well. The next herb that is super helpful is called mullen or verbiscum thapsus. Once again, probably said that wrong. So mullen leaves are both anti-inflammatory and antibacterial, so they make for a really great bandage on the go. If you don't have a band-aid on you, you can slap a little bit of mullen leaf on. Because mullen leaves are fuzzy, some people can have a little bit of a skin reaction to the leaf, so test it out first. The thick leaves are also really great for padding if you have super achy feet. You can line the bottom of your shoes with them because they're nice and plush. The last thing, mullen is really great in tea. You probably won't use this unless you're like full on backpacking in the winter or fall when colds and flus and things like that are common, but 
Mullen leaves steeped in hot water are a really great way to soothe your mucous membrane. So if you're coughing or sneezing or any of that crap stuff, you can do that. However, you want to make sure that you only take um, a few cups at a time because your body's not going to be used to it and you can overdo it just like you can with most teas. I use mullein in tea all the time. One of those, actually the first one on the bottom uh, that you can see hanging over there is mullein. And once again, before you put anything on your body or in your body, check with a professional. It's nice that I grew up with my mom, but make sure you know what you're doing. So identifying. So mullein leaves grow in a rosette. Just like you think of rose petals, they kind of fold around each other growing out of the earth. The leaves are big and fuzzy, and the actual plant shoots out this really fun stick that is covered in yellow flowers, and those can grow up to six feet tall. There were some mullein right around my house on the river last year that was taller than me, and I'm 5'6", so it kind of makes sense. And fun fact, those center stalks, because they are so woody, they used to be called witch's candles because you be, you were able to dip them in paraffin or something like that and light the top and you can use it as a wick. Next are hair lichens, also called usnea. There are those really fun little fluffs of what looks like green hair hanging off of trees. Usnea contains usnic acid, which is a naturally occurring antibiotic, which is really great. And because it is a naturally occurring antibiotic, you can actually press it together to create dressing for wounds. So once again, if you get a cut, scrape, etc., you need some antibiotic on there. All you need, press some usnea, slap a mullein leaf on top of that, and give it a good tie up. Next is plantain, plantago major. That sounds like something Xenon would say if you're a 90s kid and watched Xenon on the Disney Channel. Totally sounds like one of her exclamations. Anyhow, plantain is another one of those herbs that is super useful and people pull it as weeds all the time. You can find it in sidewalk cracks, you can find it in the mountains, you'll find it in your garden. It is all over the place. Anywhere where there's broken ground, like think construction sites, it's gonna be there. So plantain leaves are anti-inflammatory. They contain antibacterial flavonoids and they have astringent tannins, which can help with stopping bleeding as well. Those leaves can be, once again, mushed up into a poultice. So adding filtered water, make sure that these waters are filtered. You want to take like stream water that has a bunch of bacteria in it. You want like filtered water that you brought out of your water bottle and mash up the leaves to make a, a nice little goopy poultice and put it on whatever is ailing is really good at soothing in general so insect bites stings poison ivy rash sunburn all of that is going to help calm down plantain is a, another one of those plants that grows in rosettes once again all of those leaves kind of wrap around each other the leaves can be up to seven inches long and it has a single stalk that sends out flowers much like those mullein but they're going to be much shorter and those flowers can be kind of grayish to white and last but not least is arnica. I love arnica. However, arnica, according to one of my favorite books that I'll talk about in a bit, is actually technically poisonous. So why on earth am I using that in this video? Arnica is not to be applied on broken skin. Any, any way that any of those toxins can get into your skin, no dice. So no cuts, no scrapes, none of that. You also don't want to take it internally unless it has been prepared in a homeopathic. So those Arnica pills or the Arnica gels are super, super diluted. So never try to make some of that yourself. No thanks, nobody wants to be poisoned. So while you don't want that in your body, Arnica on your body is incredible for soothing joint pain, muscle pain, all of that. Once again, another poultice, you take the beautiful yellow arnica flowers, mix it with filtered water, mash it around to make a nice pulp, and then you put that on a swollen ankle, some sore muscles, things like that, and that will actually help bring down that inflammation. So you maybe you can put a little weight on it, just hold you over until you get some medical care. If you are a person like me that loves to see everything in writing with pictures as well, 
I use three fun books to kind of identify and figure out what to do with herbs along with my mother's entire library of stuff, but these are great great go-to's. My absolute favorite go-to is for the Rocky Mountain region, but I know there are a few other ones for different regions as well. This is the Edible and Medicinal Plants of the Rockies by Linda Kershaw. I'll link all of these below. But as you can see, it has how to identify what the names are, how to use it as food, medicine, other uses, um, descriptions, and then they have a nice photos. Next, you can get this at your local Barnes Noble or online. It's the National Geographic Guide to Medicinal Herbs. Once again, big pictures, explains everything, shows the leaves, all of that fun stuff. And then last, this is Healing Herbs by Tina Sams. And I love this because it uses all of the herbs in really fun recipes. So gorgeous pictures once again, but it shows you how to use it in tea and stuff like that. And there's a whole chapter on chamomile. Love it. So much fun. So once again, I am not a professional. However, I did grow up with a mom who is a professional and learned straight from her. So I know how to identify and what to use and how. So if you are a first timer when it comes to herbs, make sure you actually know what you're doing. I know a lot of really cool places have like in-person classes you can use, which are really cool if you're here in Denver, a pocket theory tinctura, great. However, I hope you enjoyed these really fun five great herbs to know while you're hiking. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Apparently, Nico wants to say goodbye as well. And remember, if you want to see more in depth about identifying still pictures, things like that, check out my blog post down below. I make wellness videos every Wednesday, and these little fluffs, one and two, are the stars of the show on Samoyed Sundays. So I hope you see you again soon. Bye.